G'day Roosters, it's drafting standards time and now we're talking about metric dimensioning guide and what I mean by that is the elements of style in doing good dimensioning of a drawing and the reason we want to do that is that if we have good dimensioning one, the dra drawings are a lot easier to use two, they look great and three, they look professional so what are some of the elements of style in good dimensioning? Well, let's talk first about the line work. So line work, projection lines indicate extremities of a dimension. So these objects here, these ones, these are what you call projection lines. Now, there's two ways of doing this, but first of all, we have the option where we have a gap here at the object, and that's essential, one millimeters minimum. That's to differentiate between the object and the dimensions. Now the other style is that your projection stops at a, a fixed dimension, like this. So there's two styles here, but you must have a gap between the dimension and the object. Now the other end of the projection line is normally two millimeters past the dimension line. So that bit, this, this here is the dimension line. This one, these are dimension lines, so that line, projection line, extends two millimeters at one to one past that dimension line. Similar here. Now dimension lines, as I have met, mentioned just a second ago, they run between projection lines. So two projection lines and a dimension line in between. And they generally terminate with an arrow or a tick. They're the two most common styles that you see. So this is an arrow example and this is a tick example. Now an arrow at one to one, three millimeters long, one millimeters high. And a tick at one to one is two millimeters long. Now the line work for all your dimension lines, so your dimension line and your projection line should be thin. I strongly recommend 0.18 thickness at one to one for line work or printout scale, sorry. Now for dimensions that cannot be drawn to their true termination point, the free end is terminated in a double arrowhead. Here's an example of that. So 100 is out that way. The line is not complete. The free, free end has a double arrow because it continues. That's how you do that. Now the scale between the object, so the object and the dimension line, has a formula, and that's 15 times the scale. So in this example here, this is one to one, so it's 15 millimeters. If it was uh, one to 10, this drawing, that would be 150 millimeters, if this object's drawn one to one. Now with the other style, where you have the projection line stop short, you have a consistent gap there. And that, that formula is 10 millimeters times the scale. So in that, this case at one to one, it's 10. Now then, when you have another dimension on top of this, you just adjust it a little bit because the, the gap's a little bit too big, so it looks a bit odd. That formula is 12 times the scale. And it's the same with the other style, 12 times the scale. Now let's talk about notation. So the, the, the numbers and the letters in the actual dimensions. So first of all, dimensions are usually in millimeters. And this is for engineering drawings, all types of engineering, uh, architectural drawings, etc. are millimeters. Now there would be an exemption there with civil because civil is often in meters. Now what we do, what, what we, why are we saying that is we don't put on the drawing each time mm, 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 mm after every object. This whole thing is in millimeters and it's noted somewhere either on the title block or in the general notes of the drawing set that all dimensions are in millimeters. So you don't need to needlessly repeat MMMM and clutter the drawing every time on a dimension. And so that's the same with civil drawings with meters. You would just have that noted somewhere in the drawing set. Now dimensions that are less than one, so you're into decimals, should lead with a zero before the decimal point. So here's a strange example, but we have a micro chamfer here on this object. 
at 0.5 millimeters at 45 degrees. Now if you imagine if that zero wasn't there and it just said 0.5, you could easily miss the dot and it'd be a five millimeter chamfer, not 0.5. So always put a 0.5 if you are less than one, put a zero in front of it. Now angular dimensions, there's two ways to express that. And the most common way is decimal degrees, which is shown here, but it is a whole number. Now just imagine if that though was 135 degrees and then the next, it was actually a half degree greater. So there'd be two ways to express that. First, it'd be decimal degrees. So that would be 135.5 degrees. And the other way would be to express it in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So there's no seconds in that one. So that one would be 135 degrees, 30 minutes. Now, when specifying an overall dimension, one non-critical component dimension should be admitted. Now, here's an example. We have the overall dimension. And I've decided that the critical set out is from this side. So I have 10, 49, and not this information. So what, what I want people to do when they set this out is set out from here. So if there is any slight error, it's not gonna be as big an issue because this is the critical side. This is the non-critical side. I've told them that that is that by the way I've dimensioned there. Now where all component dimension must be specified, the overall length should be specified as an auxiliary dimension. So what that would mean is that you might put the word reference under it. So all auxiliary dimensions should be either in brackets or noted reference for that purpose. And it's not the primary thing that you should use for set out. Now dimensions that are not to scale for some reason are underlined as the example is shown here or they have NTS. Now NTS is probably the better way and if you've got space, put the whole word not to scale. Now where the, you might have this situation where you have to put a plus or minus uh, degree in there, or symbol in there, so it's approximate, you could say. There is an approximate symbol, but most people confuse that with the minus sign. So plus or minus can be used to show that a number has been rounded off to the nearest whole number. Now generally this is not required unless it clears up why a dimension string does not close off. So that's one reason why you'd use um, the plus or minus. Another reason might be that you uh, um, have an object that you can't get accurately until it gets to sight. So you'd say 100 millimeters plus or minus and when they get to site, they shave off the five millimeters either side or whatever it is to make it work. So lastly, let's talk about alignment of dimensions and the annotation alignment. So the two common methods of aligning annotations and notations, and aligned would be the most common. Now what I mean by aligned is the dimensions are parallel to the dimension line and dimensions well, annotations are parallel to the dimension line and dimensions can be right, readable either from the bottom or the right of the drawing. So this example here isn't aligned. It's read from left to right or from the um, right hand side of the drawing up that way. It's consistent. So you wouldn't have that span, spun around and read from the left hand side. So it's either left to right or right hand side of the drawing, left to right. Now the other other way of doing it is uh, unidirectional. Now, to tell you the truth, I have rarely ever seen unidirectional um, dimensioning. So that in this case, this 45 would be spun spun around and spun around, so it'd be all be reading horizontal. But that's pretty rare to see it like that. So thank you for watching that drafting standards on metric dimensioning guide, the elements of style. If you'd like to look at that article again, that's on blog.draftsperson.net metric-dimensioning-guide. Just Google it, you'll find it.